Anyway. All right. Ready? <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's right, no problem. Let's do it. All right. What's up, everybody? Drew here. Holly's getting set at <laughs> anxietyguy.com. Back with my buddy Holly from all the way from Mallorca. Looking hey. cool in the library. <laughs> going on, house? Yeah, pretty good. Well, actually pretty bad. I've been quite sick the last few days. And oh. But, you know, I'll get through. I just want to apologize in advance for any coughing in this episode. Yes. Before we went on the air, Holly's just swigging cough medicine like <laughs> So she gets a little woozy. Just, it's okay. <laughs> Starts talking nonsense. It's totally fine. So what we're going to do today is we're going to read aloud all of the books in Holly's library. So yeah. it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Seven years, probably. I think we calculated once. It will probably take seven years to read them all. To read all the books? <laughs> right, good. I don't know. Will Skype record that long? So anyway, today we want to talk about uh, like the nuts and bolts of exposure and maybe like clarifying some misconceptions that we see a lot of people have, especially in the Facebook group. So if, I'll say right up front, if you're not in the group, follow the link in the description and join the group. So shoot, what do you, what do you got? I mean, you had some really, I think you had some good topics here and a good idea of what's going on. Yeah, well, what I just wanted to say really was that because I feel like if I joined the group now, when I was, you know, back really suffering with anxiety, I would probably think like, but I don't, I don't need, to, I don't really get exposure because I was out and about doing everything. I was working, I was traveling, I was doing everything, but I was just panicking the whole time I was doing it. I didn't really have specific triggers. It was just sort of randomly all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, but how can I do exposure when it's just all the time and there's nothing I'm avoiding? And so, I see also other people in the group that are like that, but then also I see other people who, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I had my agoraphobic phase as well, but, but in the right. end, you know, I, I was doing everything and I still, you know, wasn't getting better until I, you know, learned what I had to do. And right. uh, yeah, and I see other people in the group and, and some people like are saying like, I don't get it. I'm going out every day. I'm doing this exposure. I'm doing it and I'm doing it and every day and I'm still panicking in this situation. Like how, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Or they so. think the exposure is just the act of doing it. Like, yeah. That, like that exposure is just, well, as long as I go there, then that's exposure and then, you know, I should be getting better. Yeah. But it doesn't, yeah. it's, it's a much subtler, uh, um, yeah, I can't think of the I, I word. think there's a couple of things we should talk about here. We should talk about what, because people ask all the time, what does it look like? They literally ask the question, what does it look like? So we can talk about, I think, what it looks like when you're what actually like? engaged. Well, people will say like, okay, so I'm supposed to do this thing. Tell me exactly what that looks like. Okay. like in other words, give me step by step what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, we might not be able to do step by step, but we can give a rough idea of like, just going to the place that makes you anxious isn't exposure. There's, there's more to it. Yeah, And then I think the other thing that we should probably talk about is like actually doing it in a systematic way, which is another thing that I think people miss. They just think like, well, I, I do it. I go to the supermarket when I need to, and I pick my kids from school when I need to, but then they retreat all the rest of the time. So they're not actually doing it systematically and repeatedly. That's the, another error that I see. So what does it, what does it look like? Like, okay, so you're going to, now it's time to do some exposure and pick a place. I don't care what it is. You're going to drive around, you can get in the car and drive away from the house. That makes you panic. Is it just, it's not just the driving. Like, it's not just the happen. driving. It's right. about what you do with that panic, right? Correct. So, I mean, for me, it was kind of a different, slightly different thing because my biggest thing that I did was that I took a benzo when I was feeling anxious mm -hmm. to sort of in my mind to get me out and about to keep me doing stuff and going places and working and everything the only way i could get through which we see people do that a lot right i got through right. it i, made I it. mean i would have got through that anyway like it's, you don't get through it because you were never in any possibility right. of not getting through do you know what i mean right you were like, always gonna make it yeah you were always gonna make it it's just that you it. felt right. terrible yeah yeah so, but I thought that like taking a benzo was the one thing that was, you know, allowing me to, to get out and about and keep doing stuff despite the panic. And so for me, real recovery came in the end by, by taking away, it's when I realized like something clicked about avoidance and that it wasn't just avoidance on this big grand scale of like, oh, I'm avoiding going to the supermarket or I'm avoiding going to work and stuff because I was like, I'm not avoiding anything. So why am I still ill? And it's because I was avoiding the actual panic on the micro scale when it hit. 
So when I was feeling panicky, no matter where I was in the world, I was like, oh God, I wish I didn't feel like this. I'll take something to try and make it go away or I'll I'll do all these crazy little safety behaviors and to try and like hang on in there whilst, you know, like the panic's there. And it was completely right. the wrong message that I was sending to my, my yeah. brain. You know? Totally. And that, I think that's what most people are doing. So they're saying, yeah. or a lot, a lot of people are doing, I'll say, and, and I'm probably guilty of, I forget that like people come into the group or they're new to this. They don't understand the basics of cognitive behavioral therapy. Like why would they? Sure. So in the end, I think it's really common to say, well, but I'm out, I'm out of doing all these things and I'm, I'm, it's not making me any better. But what you just said is the key. So when you go out and do those things, first of all, you will be anxious because you're conditioned to be anxious in that situation. You may, you'll be terrified. You might even have a full blown panic attack. You'd be super uncomfortable. It's what you do when it happens that defines the act as exposure. Like, yeah. And dropping all of those safety things for you it was a benzo and all your little quirks. And I, I had them, we all had them. Yeah, and, and mints and just- Right, and the water scrap, and the, Like pinching and tensing, you know. Tensing, yeah, counting the bumps on the steering wheel and all these yeah. things. Distraction. Like, Talk right. to me, give me a quiz. Let's do some maths, like anything. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> Let me call somebody and get on the phone and talk to them. Yeah. So, Exposure is really what happens, not not when you just go out. It's what happens when you experience those feelings of panic and fear and terror and, and being uncomfortable and thinking that you're in danger. Exposure is the part where you let yourself actually fully experience those things without trying to save yourself or yeah. run. Yeah. And that the mechanism there is that when you do that, because if you go out and you go and do your exposure, whatever you think that is, driving or whatever it is, and you panic and you immediately go into tensing, poking, prodding, scratching, counting, distracting, pill popping, whatever it is, and then you get out of that situation, what you've taught yourself, the, the actual mechanism is that the poking the pulling on my ear, the running my hands through my head, the snapping the rubber band, the talking to my sister on the phone, that's what got me through it. And that yeah, is yeah, not it. what got you through it. I made it. Like, I made it. So you have taught yourself that those things saved you from this horrible thing. And, and you got through it because you were able to talk to somebody or whatever it is, do a quiz or listen to, sing to with the radio or whatever that is. So that's why the, the exposure part kicks in when you do nothing, when you just yeah. panic. Go ahead. So like, I think the word... Wrist, for God's sake. The word exposure in itself to me was always quite confusing because I thought it meant, I think it comes from like when, well, it might not, but in my head, it's like when someone has a phobia, you have to expose mm -hmm. them to this thing to, Correct. and the reason, but what, so what made sort of sense was that I realized that the exposure to the thing that makes you anxious is the important thing. So if your only trigger is driving for instance right. then like right. and you're fine walking to the shops or whatever like well good for you so like the only exposure you need to do like uh, oh <laughs> if right. only i'd had that you know <laughs> the only exposure you've got to do is to get in the car and obviously like then you get hit with the you know the the panic and everything but that's why you have to do that exposure is is to keep getting in the car is so that you can learn what you have to do when you panic it's not so you can learn how to sit in the car so much it's so that you can learn how to deal with the panic but right. if your if your trigger is like literally everything or nothing and it's just completely random and you can be sitting on your sofa watching tv and you get a panic attack because that's what yeah. it was like for me right like this idea of doing exposures i didn't understand because i was like but there's nothing i don't have a phobia of it i'm not i used to say i'm not scared of anything i'm only scared of a panic attack and that's when i sort of realized but that like so my phobia is a panic attack. Yes. So yes. Any time that panic attack comes on, is a chance to practice. That is my exposure. You know. Correct. That is that, your exposure. That's the difference between a simple phobia and an and the anxiety disorders like panic disorder, which is a non-specific phobia. So it's not the being in the car or the supermarket or the yeah. being home alone or any of those things. It's not being at the wedding or getting on a plane. It's the panic itself that you are yeah. afraid of. So exposure happens any time you get into a, an anxious or panicky situation. So yeah. it doesn't matter. And that's why it also, and when you learn to react the same way every time, it doesn't matter where you are, whether it's the supermarket, school run, the plane, the vacation, it doesn't matter, or sitting in your living room having a panic attack, 
yeah. the reaction is always the same. And when you learn that reaction and you practice it again and again and again, all of those things that seem like, well, everything's a challenge. I can't drive. I can't walk. I can't leave the house. It'll all improve at the same time. Yeah. That's why yeah. we're saying it, it might sound frustrating for some people when we keep saying like, it doesn't, we don't care what the cause is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter what it is. Right. Right. Like, you know, and if even if it's hormonal or it's some sort of like actual physical illness thing yeah. that you have that causes anxiety, because, you know, there's stuff out there that does, you know, sort of trick your anxiety and stuff. Right. Oh, have I just, is my camera <laughs> gone funny? What did I do? I what don't know. Oh. It's okay, we can <laughs> What happened? I'm looking at what looks to be. <laughs> I don't know how I to flip know. the camera. I need to oh, flip it. Oh, there it is. There you go. I'm your back. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I will just edit that part out. <laughs> no problem. What was I saying? Um, you're saying that it doesn't matter what the, the cause is. If it's yeah. is it hormonal, is it physical, is it past abuse, yeah, trauma? Yeah, because you it do get matter. physical things that will cause anxiety, and you might sure. never be able to get rid of that. And every time it's your time of the month, if you're a woman, yeah, maybe you will be more much more prone to anxiety. And there's not anything you particularly do about that but right. if you learn how to address anxiety itself like mm -hmm. then it doesn't it doesn't matter because because the anxiety and the panic attacks and stuff it's only an issue when you're it's only your reaction to it that's actually the problem it's not the Correct. panic attack it's not the anxiety it's not as it's not this huge thing that you think it is it 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 isn't it's just a few physical symptoms and some sort of like a slight l lack of rationale you know like for right. a bit because <laughs> the issue the issue is not the issue is not being anxious it's being anxious about being anxious that's exactly. the problem so yeah. and that's why in this situation maybe you'll understand exposure better if you realize that your phobia is not the driving or the yeah. oh no it's my time of the month and i'm going to feel terrible or it's not any of those things your phobia is the feeling of anxiety and panic so your job is to expose yourself to being anxious and panicking that's the deal yeah yeah and that's, that's why that also which is probably really frustrating when we say we don't care what the symptoms are we don't right. care what the causes we don't care what the symptoms are because it doesn't matter because if you address the symptoms and each symptom differently and it's got a special case with this symptom or that symptom like you can to a degree sort of learn how to be more accepting right. of them with different things but at the end of the day it's not the thing it's the fear correct, correct. that matters. <laughs> always matters, learning, yeah. right and so learning the better the the product so here's the deal and i say this all the time you have to be afraid to learn not to be afraid so but you have to learn to be afraid productively which is don't brace yourself you're not trying to brace or fight or save yourself yeah. or hang on to like you or you're not staving off some horrible fate you just have to do nothing and let that fate happen that's how you do exposure. Let the insanity come or the fainting or the falling down or the heart attack or the stroke or the death. Let it come because it won't. And then you will teach your brain that it won't come. You don't have to save yourself. And all those things you've been doing and what you think has been exposure have been unneeded, completely unneeded. So, yeah, yeah the exposure is not to the place or the thing. It's to the feelings. So that's yeah. the object of that game. Yeah. I think the other thing that we should probably talk about for a minute is the fact that exposure is best, is most effective when it's actually sy systematic and repetitive and planned. You know, yeah. sometimes, uh, you know. Planned is a big thing, actually, yeah. Planned is a big thing. So a lot of times, it, and you know what, it, it, just living your life can be part of it, too. If you have no choice but, you know, bring the kids to school and do the grocery shopping, then yes, you'll have to do it. You might have to now change the way you're doing that to do it more productively as opposed to the way you used to do it. But it's not enough to just say, I have a thing coming up, so I'm going to do that thing in three days. I'm going to be in the house and avoiding everything for the three days prior. And then afterwards, I'll avoid everything again until the next thing that I'm forced to do. That's not No, it exposure. doesn't work like that. No. It don't, won't work that way. You right? can't just so do one big thing and then nothing. Right. It's got to it be small now. steps systematically, like, yes. and yeah. consequentially. Is That's that exactly word? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Well, that you have to take the small steps, like, every day, repeatedly, systematically, incrementally. That's how exposure works. So it doesn't work by living in your bubble 75% of the time, only doing the things that you have to do 
and then thinking that that's exposure that's actually not. I mean, it, it all counts in some little way. But unfortunately, we don't unlearn those responses by thinking about them or talking about them or discussing them or reviewing yeah. them. You have to have experiences and you have to have a lot of them yeah. added up. Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. We can learn the phobia instantly. It just takes a lot of repetition to unlearn the phobia. It sucks, yeah. but oh and that, well. Like understanding it is great, it's but it's enough. not enough. You yeah. then have to like put it into practice. You know, it's it's not enough. It's it's not enough at all. So doing it incrementally in in a systematic way and repetitively is like super important. I think a lot of people forget that too. Like pick the thing that makes pick one thing that you have been avoiding because you're afraid of how you feel when you do it, and just start doing that thing every single day as often as you possibly can in the most productive yeah, way. And by the way, it not making you feel anxious is not a success. Like that's not a win. It's nice right. for you that you didn't feel anxious, but it's not like you haven't taught your brain a lesson. You know, you've not taught yourself anything right. through not feeling anxious. Right. Good exactly. for you, but but do something that makes you anxious or try, just try and get anxious, you know? Yeah, and, and if you don't, you don't. That's okay. Like, and I, people ask that all the time. Like, I went, I did my exposure and I felt fine. Like, did I fail? No, you didn't fail. You just had a good day. That's great. There's yeah. Nothing wrong with but that. then if you do it the next day and you feel anxious, that's not a setback. No, that's it's like the opposite of a setback. That's a set that's forward. Exactly right. <laughs> so, right. When you go into that situation that you usually avoid because you don't like to panic, so you don't do that thing. When you do it and you panic, that's not a setback. The, the, the yeah. progress happens when you panic, but you do it constructively and you teach yourself a lesson when it happens. The only thing that I would probably say, and I, I never like to use the term fail, but like sometimes we do fail, like we're human beings, we make mistakes. The only mistake is, wow, I was doing great. And we, how often have we heard this? I was doing great for the last three weeks. But I had no panic and anxiety and it all came crashing down today because I had a panic attack. That's not crashing down. No, that, was a, be, that was an opportunity to learn something. That's where you learn, right. So it's only crashing down if you have that panic attack and you immediately run back to your safe place, pop your medicine, call your mom. Like if you go back and do all those safety behaviors, then, you know, maybe you got to do it again. But that's why when that happens to people, I mean, I, sometimes I'm kind of brutal. And by the way, that it. will... Like, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to it happen. Will happen because it's right. really hard. It is simple, yeah. but it's very, very difficult to implement when you're in, especially in a full panic attack. It is so yeah. hard to remember. I mean, tattoo something on your wrist if you have to do it. Yeah, like you just write something hard. down. <laughs> Go in prepared. Like, yes. <laughs> but that's why doing it over and over, like yeah. repetitively and in a systematic way. You learn the skill. It's like an athlete practicing their skill. They do it every day so that they're good at it. You can't yeah. just say, oh, okay, thanks, Holly, for telling me how to do it. I'm never going to do it and expect to be good at it when I have to do it. It'll never yeah. work that way. So you have to do it a lot. You do it over and over and over. And sometimes you have a better outcome than another. But the, the bad, it's never a bad outcome because you were afraid. Never. How you no, felt no. is never the is the measure of the outcome. It's never the measure of the outcome. You're gonna feel like shit. That's the that's the way it is. Just it's expect horrible. that to happen. I'm sorry, that's the way it's it horrible. Is. <laughs> I, but I, I know, I, but I think it's important for people to really fully grasp that, and that you're still. That's not what makes you not okay. Like being uncomfortable and afraid and and feeling like you're in danger, or you're going to die. You're still okay. And let's define yeah. okay. You did not die. You did not pass out. You did not fall over. You did not cause a car wreck. You did not have a stroke or go insane. You were okay. You only thought you were going to do those things. Yeah. But thinking that that's going to happen doesn't make it true. So you, I have, was, to um, define, you have to define yeah. panic as still being okay, which is yeah, tough I had for people panic. to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah, yeah, totally. I right. had a panic attack the other day. You know, I'm, I've been really sick and um, whenever I'm sick, I just get more anxious it just happens you know I'm just hardwired that way for whatever reason right. and right. um <coughs> I was at work having a panic attack at work <laughs> um playing a gig and then after you know and obviously through the gig I was completely fine and on best form and and then and then feeling terrible again and thinking I was going to explode in the middle of a song and, and then feeling fine again you know all this sort of up yeah. and down and then after the gig I packed all my gear away and I was walking I had to put my calf quite far away and I was walking along like the riverbank not the riverbank the sea Bank. We don't have a river, it's the sea. I was walking along like the sea. 
and I was walking to my car and I was so anxious and I, I like I, and I caught myself and I like and I stopped still and I was like going oh and then because I felt like I was literally about to like melt into the the pavement and all my organs would just sort of float into the sea in a sort of red puddle you know and then and so I, and, and I was thinking like oh and by by stopping like this I've stopped that happening and then I just sort of like remembered everything and laughed right. it was just like that's ridiculous and yeah, then just yeah. relaxed my body and, and walked to my car and I didn't actually think about it again you know like but even now you know I do catch myself in, in moments in fleeting moments yeah. where I forget you know and I'm just like oh my god I stopped myself from from you know, yeah. no, no, melting I, I, into a, an organ full puddle. Like, just... That would have been so, so messy. So messy. So, so messy. Happen. Right. Like, that's really <laughs> that's a nasty way to go. But You're nothing go. I was doing, you know, if I really <laughs> genuinely. Keeping it from thought... happening. I know. That, that was what was happening like nothing I was doing me me like stop intense sure. in the street because if I'd taken one more step maybe that would have actually happened you know and I just was like what are you doing Holly and then looked yeah. at my wrist that says do panic and I was like yeah. let it come it's fine <laughs> just it's fine. just a panic attack but and that's just experience carry and you've done it so 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 yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 people are probably watching and thinking like that's well that's great but there's no way I'm gonna do that no I'm sure it was super hard the first time you did it too and I will, I'll tell you the same thing. Like, there are it times gave... when I find myself doing the same things. Same things. Like, we're yeah. human beings. And I think our initial reaction to that adrenaline hit is always the same. Of like, course. Is it, is, yours, you know, mine. Like You just feel terrified. Right. And that's just chemistry. You can't stop that. So that's the first fear that, you know, Dr. Reese always talked about. Like, we all have that. And it will never, ever, ever go away. That's okay. Yeah. So and yeah. I sometimes find the same thing. If I'm feeling anxiety for something, I'll that same thing. Like, wait a minute. Like, why am I not breathing? Hello? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, why am I not breathing? Uh, but that's just so many thousands of times of doing it and experience. This is oh, it's stupid. Oh, yeah. Great. Like, it's you know, whatever. Ni not nice, but like, it was nice to be reminded, like how, you know, sort of difficult it can be in the moment you know because what when you at when you've been out of it a long time like it's yeah. hard to remember just how hard it is do you know what I mean yeah 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 and so like it's it's not nice but it's given me a bit more you know like I'm like oh yeah that is really difficult so maybe we right. should try and explain this thing a bit better you know like that does make sense yeah of what it is so I, I hopefully this has been a, I think it's been a pretty good explanation. Like what you think has been exposure has probably not been, you know, if you're going into it and you're you know, here's here's the best test that I always like to think if you are going into the situation and your only goal is to get back out of it. You're probably not doing it right. What do you mean? So in, other, in other words, like, OK, I need to get in the car and drive and I'm, we keep using driving, but that's just an example. So I need, I'm afraid to drive. I have to get in the car to drive. Really and truly, you have to be super honest with yourself and say, what's my goal when I get in this car? Is it just to do the thing and finish it and get out of the car? Right. If it is, then you're probably not fully allowing yourself to be exposed to the thing you fear, which is not the car, it's the anxiety. So your goal when you go into that exposure, when it's planned and you're doing like this is I do my exposure at 10 o'clock on whatever Thursday morning is to say my job now is to go feel like crap for a little while. And yeah. teach myself that I'm going to be okay. And if that turns out to be a three minute drive, that's fine. If it's an hour drive, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. So your goal is not to like, I got to get in the car, I got to do my drive, and I got to get out of the car. That's that's not it. Like you're then you're kind of skating past. Yeah. The feelings. Yeah. I read a thing once that was about a thing called planned practice. So like it would be like so for instance, let's you can stick with the driving thing. If you were, <clears throat> you know really phobic of like driving or driving really triggered your anxiety you'd mm -hmm. go and just sit in your car and what you would do is you you already sort of say to yourself I'm going to allow myself to go to like a level six or seven in panic right and right. so you sort of just gauge that yourself right and so you get in and you get in your car and and whatever it takes takes to get you to and you might be like oh I'm feeling like a four so you turn the ignition on and you back out the driveway and you might just just drive around the block or whatever you call it and yeah. whatever gets you to fit so and you might be like oh I'm kind of at a five but you're like yeah but I told myself I'd go to a six today so I'm going to keep doing it until I get to six and then once you get to that six you have to try and stay in it for like five minutes or whatever you know right Right. So you know that there's an end to it, and then you, because you right. know, as soon as you then get out of the car, you're going to feel better. But you've still like, sort of, very planned out 
said mm -hmm. to yourself, I'm going to do this, it's going to be for this length of time at this level of, of panic, you know, and, and, and right. sort of like, and yeah, I, the only problem with that is that I find that when you're actually trying to, to lift it higher, it's kind of hard to do. Right? It's hard, isn't it? I know. <laughs> but, that, but that's good though, because at first, you'll have no problem lifting it higher at first. Sure, yeah. But when you start getting good at the technique, it will get harder to force it. And that just means that, well, I usually just drive my little two mile or whatever, one kilometer radius. Well, if you're having a hard time getting to level six, seven and eight, then it's time to drive to two kilometers. Like, yeah. and that'll do it. That'll kick you up. You know, it'll do it. But uh, I, I think when we talk about a plan and being systemic and, you know, systematic and methodical about it, that's perfect what you described. Yeah. I'm going to do this thing at this time on this day, and it will look like this. And I used to say... I don't know how long this drive is going to be, but I will not turn the car back toward home until I can feel my anxiety level begin to drop. Yeah. It didn't have not go not when it's still going up, but when it actually now starts to come down. Go to zero, right? So I that's exactly right. Now the 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 gut reaction or the instinct is to say I'm starting to get really afraid. I have to go home. That's normal to think that. So I would say, no, I'm starting to get really afraid. This is what's supposed to happen now. And I'm going to stay in this situation until I feel myself start to calm down. And I would pick an, a number of like, well, I needed to get to like a level of 50%, not zero. I never made myself get to zero because that's often not realistic. Um, sure. But like, all right, so if I hit my peak, when I start to feel it going down, when I feel 50% better, it's hard to judge. And all right, I've done my job and I'm going to calmly, not run home, but I'm calmly going to end it now. So... And, and that worked out really well. So that's kind of what you have to do. You have to chill in it. It's like getting yeah. to it. Yeah. I've seen the hit and run exposures. I don't want to go too much longer, but I've seen that too. What's like, the hit and run exposure? The hit and run exposure is I'm really afraid to walk to the mailbox, for instance, post box, whatever you call it, where you are. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up my courage. I'm going to walk. And, and it's Billy would used to do this. You've seen this in some of Billy's old videos. Like, I'm going to walk to the post box. I'm going to get up my courage. I'm going to wait for two hours and psych myself out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get to the post, up, post box. Look, I made it. Snap selfie and immediately okay. run home. That's the hit and run exposure. Look, I made it to the post box. And then boom, straight back home. It only works when you stay at the post box yeah. while you're feeling anxious and do that constructive thing and surrender to the feelings and let them happen. Like that's, that's when the magic actually happened. It wasn't the getting there. Because if you get there and then yeah. immediately go back, yeah, I've seen that in driving too. Like my goal today was to drive to this particular corner. So you drive to it and you immediately turn around and go home. Like, mm, that's that's the hit and run. <laughs> that, that matters. Yeah. You try not uh, to yeah, so just one, one other thing that might be useful for anyone. If, like I used to take a benzo. So a systematic sort of way of doing, of handling that. It wasn't like a benzo that I took all the time. It was, a, you know, as and when needed thing. Right. So if anyone has this, this is quite a good method is to be like, oh, I'm feeling really anxious. So when you would go to take that benzo, you go, I'm going to wait 10 minutes and then I know I can take it. Right. And okay. then so you wait that 10 minutes, you know, you have to sit in that and then and then you take it. And then like the next week or whatever. So you do a week of that. And then the next week I'd be like, I'm going to wait. 20 minutes to take this and like honestly like and then it'd be like half an hour and most of, i mean after 15 minutes like you just don't you forget to take it in the end you just because you right. forget and you come out yeah, of it yeah, anyway yeah. Yeah, and then you yeah. start to realize like oh my god it's not the benzo that brings me out of this anxiety it's just you. you know and also you know i would notice that just the taste of it on my lips i would be like you instantly start to feel better and i'm like i'm pretty sure it doesn't work that fast and it's no, it you know doesn't. the placebo effects of it would work very right. very quickly and so and once i started realizing yeah 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 uh, that was I, quite I a good same... way of like so i'm gonna go longer and longer so i know i would get that relief at the end like i've just got to do this for 10 minutes i've got to stay at this level of anxiety then i'll take the benzo <laughs> yeah. always it would start to come down anyway and then i'd take it but i probably don't really need to take it you know <laughs> yeah that's a really good that's a super good technique that's a really good technique actually yeah. I, um, I, I think that myself. <laughs> hey nice it's the holly method um I, i'll add to that two things i want to add to that the other thing is when you turn around and you say okay i'm going to exit now whatever the situation driving or whatever now i'm going to get back to to what i consider a safe zone when you make that turn in that direction, whether it's literally in a car or figuratively, and you turn towards safety, 
I would bet dollars to donuts that you take those first few steps toward the safe zone and all of a sudden you will start oh, to feel sure. your anxiety subside. So if suddenly you went from like, oh my God, I how am I going to make it home to, oh, all right, I'm almost home. Like you feel better the closer you get to safe zone, whatever that is, then you have to deny yourself the path back to safety. I'm yeah. going to sit in this for oh, three minutes. Here for 10 minutes, yeah, three minutes, five so, minutes, whatever. Whatever, it, whatever you can do. In the yeah. beginning, it might only be 30 seconds, but 30 seconds matters. And then the next day, it'll be 45 seconds. I don't care if you have to start with 30 seconds. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. But you'll start to build that up. So you'll recognize that. Yeah. Like as soon as you go, go out the exit and head toward home or whatever safe is, you start to feel it already start to come down. Yeah, you got to wait. Don't let that happen immediately. Like yeah, sitting. whatever it is that that sort of that you go to do when you feel panicky that you know will sort of right. like freak down, you got to wait, wait, wait. And, and and you know give it that time right. before you do it. It's exactly even if it's start with if you can only start with thirty seconds, that's okay. Thirty seconds yeah. would be okay. Just then yeah. forty five seconds. The next time, sixty the next. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So sometimes it's just changing direction. You know, like oh, you, you used to do it this way. Just the change of direction sometimes is enough to really get the ball rolling. Oh, now I'm going to do it this way, different way now. So there you go. I think we have yeah. to mention just quickly before we end it that the benzo thing. Like if you're taking a benzo regularly, please don't just stop taking the benzo. No. Like I, we kind of have to say that. Like yeah, of course. you might want to, but you can't just stop taking it because you think it's going to make exposure better. If you're taking it every single day, you have to keep taking it you and taper careful. carefully with your doctor. Right. So don't just stop taking that, please. Um, there you go. That's it. All right. I think we're good. Oh. That's 30 minutes. Perfect time. Like, hey. All right. So, you know, we, we still have to finish the book. So at some point, I think we have a few more chapters to go now. I don't even know where we are. We're like no, I don't, eight, know I, think. I don't know. We'll come back and do them again. So now it that gets we have into the chapters about like if you have a, a grief or a shame yeah. or it gets into yeah. those. They're quite interesting. I find this quite interesting as well. Those yeah, they were. Because I think they address those things that those are those extenuating circumstances. People always say, oh, no, but I have. Uh, no, no, she covered it. Sorry. <laughs> she covered it. <laughs> she covered it. <laughs> Grandma had you covered. That's the way it works. <laughs> anyway. Uh, All right. Very cool. Thanks, Hals. I appreciate you taking the time. We'll do another one real soon, right? No problem. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. See you guys later. I'm going to stop recording. Let's oh, we still record. <laughs> I'll edit it at the end. It's the awkward, like, where's the button again? It's over here. Hang on. <laughs>